I'm Josephine Tite, and I'm on a quest to redefine what it means to be a caregiver by bringing the tools of positive psychology to the caregiving community. This is the Caregiver Toolkit. Did you know that one in four Canadians are caregivers? From people at home caring for a loved one to those of you working in the caregiving industry, every one of you knows providing care can be rewarding, but it also comes with some challenges. That's why I believe in the power of positive psychology. Positive psychology is not about being happy all the time. It's about building mental and social skills to move through life. With these tools, we create upward spirals and discover how to leverage the good times while getting through the hard times. We've been working on the Caregiver Toolkit for years. Every episode, we'll introduce a simple tool to you that can help you practice positive psychology. This episode's tool is savoring. Savoring is all about slowing down time. When you practice savoring, you're controlling where you put your attention. And in particular, you're evoking and noticing positive emotions. You're leveraging them and making them last longer. We've got two caregivers who are gonna be implementing our savoring tool. Joe, who's a professional caregiver, caring for Ken, who's a 73-year-old man with cerebral palsy, and Jill, who cares for her mom, Myrna, who's been in a wheelchair for 37 years. So Jill, maybe you can share a little bit with us about what's happened with your mom, what brings you to today, and why you've chosen to be a caregiver. There was a car accident, drunk driver, and my mom has been a paraplegic ever since. There's been a lot more um, physical stuff that has come up, so I have become more of a caregiver role just in the last few years. I'm an only child, so I think it just kind of became my role. So what I love most being a caregiver is the satisfaction. They feel a comfort within themselves that there's always somebody in there that they can depend on. It's hard to like, have to rely on your daughter for those type of things or whatever, but it's also very helpful because we can kind of live our life normally and not have to rely on other people coming in and out of the house. Mm -hmm. I've fallen in love with this family and Ken's been really like a, a close brother to me. I think it's brought us closer together in a way um, and it's taught me a lot about myself. I can do more than I ever thought I could. So tell me what you guys enjoy doing together. We go for lots of walks or work out together and then looking at pictures of old memories and stuff is one of our favorites. That's a lot of fun. Yeah. yeah. I love like playing music with him. His smile, his smile is really precious to me. From the day of my accident, I didn't want people helping me do things. I wanted to be able to do it by myself. I, I feel like some something inside him is also missing. When you buy a pizza and you're just gonna see like there's a piece missing, I want to be that missing gap in his heart. So reality is we know that caregiving is not all sunshine and rainbows. So tell me about some of your challenges as a caregiver. I don't know how to manage my time anymore. Like I'm all, almost always with Ken and I, I don't have time for my relationship, for my family, for, for myself. So I think a big challenge is mental health. When she's frustrated or irritable one day, I tend to take that on myself um, and I become the same way. And then I just start doing things for her to try to make it better, where in actuality, I'm taking away the independence and it just becomes a vicious circle. You really just would like life to slow down a little mm -hmm. bit. I'd really love to introduce you to the savoring tool. There might be some ways that we can kind of break up this vicious circle that's happening. So this is the savoring toolbook. It goes over what savoring is. As an emotional awareness tool, it's gonna to be really helpful for us to interject a positive emotion into that negative emotion cycle that you guys told me you were experiencing. So savoring is just about taking your five senses and telling them where to go. You've told me that you love music and it's something that you do with Ken. So we've created this tiny little token and it's just there for you to remind you you're gonna savor when you <laughs> pull this pick out and play that tune on the guitar. This will be a visual reminder for you while you're implementing the savoring exercise. What I'd like you to do is select a photo and put it in the frame, and then you'll use that, and it'll help all the feelings, the emotions, and the experience that happened in the past come into the present. So for two weeks, you're gonna implement the savoring tool every day, and then we're gonna meet back and see how things are going. Perfect. Okay. Positive psychology is grounded in neuroscience. We're gonna dive a bit deeper into the topic with neuroscience expert, Sue Langley, all the way from Australia. Hi, Sue. How are you? Hi, Josephine. I'm well, thank you. So the tool we're using in this episode of the Caregiver Toolkit is savoring. So I'd love to hear from you a little bit about your definition of savoring, and then we'll get into how savoring helps us be our best versions of ourselves. Wonderful. Well, I have to admit, I love savoring. 
And I think、um, for me, it's about bringing all of your senses to the experience.、Um, and often we do it when it's something we've always wanted to do in life. If you've always wanted to see the Eiffel Tower or something, when you're standing in front of it, it's like, oh, and your whole self is there. You can feel the air on your skin, the grandeur, the every sight, every sound. So we bring our whole self. But that's not just something we have to leave for those awe-inspiring moments. It's something we can do through life. And the thing that I love about the research around savoring is savoring could be leading up to something. We often do this when we、um, plan a holiday, for instance. Every little bit of it, you're you're researching things of which restaurant you want to go to or where you want to visit, etc. And you savor the experience leading up to it. But then also, there's the wonderful past element of when you've done something and then you recall it again and you reminisce and you savor all of those wonderful elements. And the reason that savoring works is because I'm bringing all of my senses, but I'm also engaging that limbic system, that emotional centre. But I love the fact that we can actually savour on a continuum of sort of future, present, and the past. We can bring those savouring elements to the mix. When you were talking, I started thinking about caregivers because they started telling me that they were noticing things that they didn't notice before. Yeah, and it's one of the things that we sort of see. If, if I think of neural plasticity, the brain is changing all the time. We're wiring new, new connections, if you like, all the time in our brain. So when I start to tell my brain I want it to pay attention, I want it to notice things,、um, and I want it to be present, well, guess what? All of a sudden, the byproduct is your brain starts noticing things. And imagine what's going on in your brain if instead of your brain pointing out everything that's going wrong. Your brain is pointing out all the things that are wonderful to be savoured, and again, it doesn't have to be big things. It's those tiny little things that actually build up to change the way our brain is wired and change again how we show up. So, Joe, tell me about the last couple of weeks. How have they been? In the last couple of weeks, it's kind of satisfying and weird at the same time. It's been kind of eye-opening for me over the last few days. After the afternoon rest. I just brought out my guitar and just started playing his favorite song, like "You Are My Sunshine." He started like smiling and singing with the song. So I ended up putting the frame itself on the dinner table. I put the picture out in the morning. That kind of gave us the day to think about it, and then that night we would talk about what was happening in that picture. So while savoring, I kind of make the moment like slow down, observe what's happening within me, and observe what's happening with Ken. On the third day, I noticed like some stuff that I never noticed before, like his feet stomping, like his hands like trying to, trying to do this. In some ways, it's made our relationship stronger, and it's kind of helped me to realize what she's going through. We've had more real conversation, so if something's bothering one of us, we try to talk about it. The exercise wasn't about. Try to figure out what your mom's feeling、nope. and talk about it,、nope. right? No, I think because we took the time to do the tool, it got us into more of an emotional way of thinking, and so I think that that made it easier to bring up the emotional conversations because we've we've gotten to that deeper level. I'm feeling I'm feeling whole as a person, yeah, and I realized more and more every day, like during the process, that there's more to life than this. Like there's more every day. Like I discover new things, new songs. And I just want the music to last. Have you felt that you've been able to, you know, I guess feel a tangible amount more of independence? I kind of feel like, kind of a, a weight's been lifted. When we started doing this, it was a little bit more. Well, no, I, like I can do that by myself. I don't need to be asking her that. You know, it's been a hard couple of years, but looking at pictures and realizing that the, it is possible to do all that stuff again. How was the the visual reminder? You know, the oh the yeah, topic, how how'd that work out for you? It worked out very well. I even made a keychain out of it, so it reminds me of like how the tool helped me like see myself more and more. How do you see this tool being a part of your life moving forward? I'm not even sure if I can start living my like starting my day without. This tool anymore, because you were able to start to think about planning things for the future. Yes. What did that give you? Like, what? I think it, it gave us hope. Yeah. So we've got a date set. We are planning another trip. Talking about booking a trip or those type of things is giving me something to look forward to. If we're feeling down, we've actually talked about what sort of things can we do on that trip and where can we go, and it's really helped to kind of change our mindset.、Mm -hmm. Awesome. So a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, it feels like a little bit incomplete, 
but now that I'm, I'm incorporating like myself with Ken, it feels it feels like the pizza is already complete. <laughs> it's more than the pineapples now. There's like mushrooms and bell peppers. It's like it's stuffed crust pizza. It's like supreme. So yeah, it really feels good. You've seen two ways you can implement savoring into your life. But how else do you think you can add it to your own toolkit? Here are a few ways you can try savoring. Plan a date with a friend and talk about a favorite past memory that you had. Or plan a day into the future that you look forward to and savor it when it gets there. If you'd like to practice more savoring, you can download the savoring toolbook for free at thecaregivertoolkit.com. Until next time, I'm Josephine Tite. Take care and give care. <laughs>